So this is um, about taking the inverse of a matrix. It says a square matrix, and that's because you can only take inverses of square matrices. So let's say we have a matrix, and we'll have 2, 4, negative 1, 8. So the whole idea behind it, inverse matrix, is that if you take you take a matrix A and you multiply it by the inverse of the matrix, you end up with what's called the identity matrix. Now for a two by two matrix, it looks like that. If you have a three by three matrix, it looks like this. So it's kind of like what you end up with when you do Gauss-Jordan elimination. <clears throat> so it's from an inverse perspective it's kind of like you know if you took five and you multiply it by one-fifth you get one so you can think of one-fifth being the inverse of five to some extent and you end up with one so this is the equivalent of a matrix that has a value of one the other thing about inverse or identity matrix if you take any matrix b and you multiply it by its inverse, you just get B again. So an identity matrix is kind of equivalent to one. So if you take A times one, that's equal to A. So those are the algebraic versions of the matrix versions. Now the advantage besides this property, <clears throat> what does that do for you? Well, you can solve multiple linear equations using the inverse matrix. And we'll show you how to do that later. But for right now, we're just going to show you how you calculate the inverse, how you figure out what the inverse of the matrix is. So <clears throat> what you do is you create an augmented matrix. So let's take the one that I just made up here. So you take this coefficient matrix, or just, just a square matrix, and you augment it with the identity matrix. So that's in contrast to what we did earlier, where we augmented it with the right-hand side of the equation. So let's, so we get 1, 0, 0, 1. And the procedure, what you're trying to get to is, is very similar to what we did before, is you want to transform D, I keep doing the wrong way here, you want to transform <coughs> them into the end identity matrix on this side, and you get the results over here. And this resulting, this matrix, this part of this augmented matrix is the inverse. So you use the same procedure. You use row operations to go from here to here. So the first thing that I might do in this case, and then again, there's multiple ways that you can get to the final answer. So this is not the only way. There's two ways. So for example, in this case, if I wanted to, what if my first thing is I want to get a one up here. So I could divide this all by two. So one possibility would be to just divide the first row by one. The other option would be to <coughs> re replace, switch row one and row two, and then m multiply that by negative one. So another thing we could do is have one uh, negative eight, 1, negative 8, 0, negative 1, and just move row 1 to here. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to use the second one. Again, it doesn't matter. Multiple ways to get to the final answer. <coughs> Okay, so that's my first thing. Now, 
the next thing I want to do is I want to get a zero here. So if I multiply the first row times negative two and then add them together, that's that'll achieve what I want. So let's write down row one, which is one, negative eight, zero, one. I'm going to take row one and I'm going to mul multiply row one by negative two. So here's my row 1, multiply it by negative 2, I'll get negative 2, positive 16, 0, negative 2. Then I'm going to take row 2, write that down here, so that's 2, 4, 1, 0. And then I'll add those together. So I'm going to take 2 times row 1 and add it to row 2. So I get 0, 20, 1, negative 2. Just add these two together. So that's my new row 2. So let me go ahead and write that out. So I have row 1 stays the same as the previous step. And replace row 2 with 0, 20, 1, negative 2. Then I want to get a, a 1 here. So all I'll do is I'll take, now I'll take row 2, the new row 2, and I'm going to multiply by 1 /20th. So here's my, here's my new row 2. So I'm going to take that and multiply by 1 /20th. And then I could substitute that in. So I'll get keep the first row the same. Place the second row with 0, 1, 1 20th, negative. I'm going to simplify down to 1 tenth. OK, and then finally I want to get a 0 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2, so let me write row 2 down, which is 0, 1, 1 20th, negative 1 tenth. And I'm going to add that. I'm going to multiply, take row 2, multiply by 8. And so I get positive 8 here, which will cancel out the negative 8. So I take this in times of 8, so I get 8. Uh, 8 twentieths minus 8 tenths, because that's 8 times row 2. And then I'll take row 1, and I'll add it to row 2 times 8. But before we do that, let's, let's just write what row 1 is. So row 1 is 1, negative 8, 0, negative 1. So now I'm going to add these two together. I'll get 1, 0, 8 twentieths, which is 4 tenths, and then negative 1 plus negative 8 tenths, which actually is, um, well, it's, it's going to be uh, 10 tenths, 8 tenths. It's going to be 18 tenths, which is 9 fifths. So that becomes a negative 9 fifths. Uh, this is two fifths. So what I'm left with is one. Row one is replaced by this. So I get one zero, two fifths, negative nine fifths, zero, one, one twentieth, and negative one tenth. So if the original matrix was A, then the inverse of A is 2 fifths, negative 9 fifths, 1 twentieth, negative 1 tenth. And I'm going to pause for just a second and use my calculator just to double check my answer. Okay, I made a mistake.
So let's go back here. So it happened uh, right here, right there. That should be negative. So that's positive. So that's positive. So that's positive. So that's positive. So let me fix that. So what do we have? This is positive. This is positive. Actually, it's not right. What did I do wrong here? Oh, yeah, this is. So that was negative right there. Sorry, got carried away here. So that's negative. So this is when I multiply it by negative 2. I didn't change that to positive. Okay. So, so this is positive. This is positive. This is, okay, so we're going to have to, at this point, That's positive. And so when I add these two together, I've got 8 tenths minus 1, which is is 2 tenths. It's actually negative. Okay. So let's see, I think I've got a sign right here. So that's row one. Oh, that's positive. Is that correct? No, that's, that's negative. So row one is still negative. And I add those together. And uh, So that one is negative. Okay, so you end up with negative two tenths. So now we come over here, and um, it's this one right here that I have to correct. So instead of so this is a negative one fifth. This is negative one fifth. This is positive. That's positive. So it's one two fifths, negative one fifth, one twentieth, one tenth. And the whole idea here is that if we take these two matrices, so we take the original matrix. 2, 4, negative 1, 8, times the inverse, which is this number thing down here, which is 2 fifths, negative 1 fifth, 1 twentieth, 1 tenth. And I multiply these two together, what I'll have is 2 times 2 fifths, which is 4 fifths, plus 4 times one twentieth, which is four twentieths, which equals one. Because you have four fifths, this is one fifth, four fifths plus one fifth is one. Okay, this entry is going to be two times negative one fifth, so I get negative two fifths. And then I have four plus four times four tenths. Well, two fifths is four tenths, so this equals zero. Then we have negative 1 times 2 fifths, which is negative 2 fifths. And then we have 8 times 1 twentieth plus 8 twentieths. Well, 2 fifths is equal to 8 twentieths, so they cancel out. And then finally, you take this times that plus that times that. So we'll have positive 1 fifth. Negative 1 times negative 1 fifth is positive 1 fifth. And we'll have 8 plus 8 times one tenth, which is eight tenths. 
but eight tenths is is four fifths plus one fifth equals five fifths, which is one. So after you've simplified everything, you get one zero zero one. Okay, so that's how you do um, matrices. So let's do one more. That is a three by three matrix. So let's say this is matrix B and So that's my matrix. So we want to find the inverse of that matrix. So we create an augmented matrix with a, an identity matrix. So that's my augment and matrix. So we've already got the first part's already got we got a one in the first row, so that's good. What I want to do is get a zero here and a zero there. So what I'll do is I'll take I'll take row one, which is one, two, negative three, one, zero, zero, and I will multiply that by negative four. So I take R one times negative 4. That gives me negative, so I'm going to multiply each, pi each one of these by negative 4. And you got to be really careful because you make one mistake and you, you've got messed up. So now I can, I can write down row 2, which I'm trying to modify. So row 2 is 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 0. So add those two. So if I take row two plus row one times negative four, I just add these two together, I get zero, negative nine, fourteen, negative four, one, zero. So I can substitute that for row two, but let's go ahead and do the next one. So again, I'm going to take row one. which is 1, 2, negative 3, 1, 0, 0. And I'm going to multiply by a negative 5. That's to get that to go to 0. So I'll get negative, negative 5. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. I get negative 10, positive 15, negative 5, 0, 0. Then I will write down row 3. And, I'll, and that is going to be 5, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1. Then I add those two. So I get 0, negative 8, 18, negative 5, 0, 1. So that is row 3 plus row 1 times negative 5. So now I go over here and I create a new matrix. I leave row 1 the same. Row 2 becomes, from here, it becomes 0, negative 9, 14, negative 4, 1, 0. And then I take row 3 and I replace that with 0, negative 8, 18, negative 5, 0, 1. I'm just going to go through and check these again because I don't want to make this mistake again. Okay, so that looks right. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take row 2 and you're going to multiply. So we're going to take row 2 and we're going to multiply by negative 1 ninth. So let's uh, 
So to do that, let's let's write in row two here. So row two is zero, negative nine, fourteen, negative four, one, zero. So you get zero, one, negative fourteen ninths, positive four, nine. Yeah, these are nine. What am I doing here? Yeah, ninths to get that to go to one. So it's negative 14 ninths, positive 4 ninths, minus 1 ninth, 0. Okay. So we go 1, 2, negative 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 14 ninths, 4 ninths, minus 1 ninth, 0. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and do the next step, which is to, is to get this to go to 0. So I'm going to take this row, which is my new row 2, and I'm going to add that to, I'm going to multiply this, so let's say row 2 now which is this one, times negative, or just times 8, because this will give me positive 8, which will cancel out with the negative 8. So I'll multiply all of these by 8, so I'll get 0, 8, minus, okay, 41, 14 times 8 is 112, so get negative 112 divided by 9. 4 times 8 is 32, so I get 32 over 9, and I get negative 8 over 9, and 0. Okay, then I take row 3 from this step, which is 0, negative 8, 18, negative 5, 0, and 1. I add those two together, and I'll get 0, 0. So what I have is 112 nights, so negative 112 plus 18 times 9. So I make this 18 into, I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 9. So I end up with uh, 50, positive 50 nights. So this is great, this times 9 is greater than 112, so you get an end up positive. Uh, here we have 32 nights, positive, subtract. 5 times 9, so this is 45 ninths, 32 minus 45 is 13, so we get negative 13 ninths, here we just get negative 8 ninths, and here we get 1. So that's my new row here, it's going to be 0, 0, 50 ninths, negative 13 ninths, minus eight ninths, one. Then I divide, or I multiply this row by the negative reciprocal. So I take R3 and I multiply by negative, actually we don't need to, not negative, I just need to multiply by the reciprocal because I want to get one here. So if I multiply by nine over 50, you'll get zero, zero, one. And then here, well, this point, we'll have negative 13 ninths times 9 over 50. So that ends up being negative, the 9's cancel out, so you get negative, negative 13 over 50. Um, the next one is you're going to multiply uh, negative 8 ninths times nine fiftieths, ninths cancel out again. So we have negative eight fiftieths. And then one times nine fiftieths is nine fiftieths. Okay, so let's let's replace that. 
So you get 1, 2, negative 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 14 over 19, 4 ninths, negative 1 ninth, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 13 fiftieths, minus 8 fiftieths, and 9 fiftieths. Let's just pause for a second. Okay, so now we have to go back in the other direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to we want to get that to go to zero and that to go to zero. So that's our next that's our next task. So what we do is we start with R three in this case, which is zero zero one negative thirteen fiftieths negative eight. 50ths, yeah, I know I can simplify that, but I'm just going to leave it as 50ths right now. I'll, I'll simplify them at the end. So we're going to take row 3, and we're going to multiply by 14 nineteenths. So anyway somewhere for a second. So what we're trying to do is get this to go to zero. So we're going to multiply by four, 14 over 9 this row. Okay, so now these fractions start to get more complicated. So we're going to, we're going to write them out down here and then we're going to uh, put the answers. So you have negative 13 over 50 times 14 over 9, so let's just multiply them together, 13 times 14, so that's negative 182 over 50 times 9, which should be 450. So that's this one, negative 182 over 450, then we take the next one, which is negative 8 fiftieths times 14 over 9. So 8 times 14 is uh, 112. So get negative 112 over 450. So that's the next one, negative 112 over 450. And the last one we need to do is 9 over 50 times 14 over 9. 9's cancel out, and we get 14 over 50. And it's uh, positive, 14 over 50. Okay, if we make through this without making a mistake, it, miracle but okay then we write down row 2 which is 0 1 negative 14 over 9 then we got 4 over 9 negative 1 ninth 0 and we add those two together and we get 0 1 0 and then we have negative 182 and then we're going to add 4 times, so to get 450, you're going to have to multiply um, 9 by what? Is actually, it's 450. Can you divide 450 by 9? You're going to have to find a common denominator. Oh, it's times 50. Okay. Yeah, so I want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 50. So I'll start again with negative 182 plus 4, which is the numerator, 4 ninths times 50. So that's to be 200, 200 over 450 is 4 ninths. So I add those two together and I get 18.
positive 18. So it's going to be 18 over 450 when I add these two together. Then I've got the next one, which is negative 112 minus 1 times 50. So I get negative 162 over 450. So I'm changing this into 50, 50 over 450. And 112 minus 50 is 100 minus 162. And the final one here is 14 over 50. And add those two together. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter that in. So we're going to have, let me put the last row in because we're done with that one. So the second row we're done with now. Okay, now we're going to again take row three which is 0, 0, 1, negative 13 over 50, negative 8 over 50, 9 over 50. And we're going to multiply that by 3. So we take row 3 times 3. So you get 0, 0, 3 negative 39 over 50, negative 24 over 50, and 27 over 50. And we're going to add that. So we're going to then take row 1 and add row 3 times 3. So actually, uh, I need to write down row 1, which I haven't done. So row 1 is going to be, from up here, is 1, 2, negative 3, 1, 0, 0. Okay, now I'll take row 1, and we'll add row 3 times 3, which is this previous one. So you add these together, and you get 1, 2, 0. And add these two together, so you have 39 50 is plus 50 50, so there's going to be... Um, 11 fiftieths. Add these two together and we get negative 24 fiftieths. And add these two together and you get 27 fiftieths. So that's my new row one. I've just got one more step. So the final step is we're going to take row 2, and we're going to multiply it by negative 2. That's so I'll get negative 2 here, and I'll add it, and I'll get 0. So you get that, negative 2, 0. So you got negative 36 over 450. Uh, negative 2 there will give you, so 162 times 2 is 324. It becomes positive because the negative times the negative, And here times 2 is we get 28 over 50. Then we write in our new row one that we had up earlier. It's right there. So this is row one. So it's one, two, zero, eleven fiftieths minus twenty-four fiftieths, twenty-seven fiftieths. And then you add these two. So you take row one and you add row two times negative two, 
and what you get is 1, 0, 0, which is what we're trying to get. Let's convert this to 4 50th. So we have negative 36, 4 50th, and we'll add 11, and we'll multiply it by 9. 50 times 9 is 4 50. So I get 63 over 450. Here I have 324 plus positive, and I subtract 24 times 9, and I get 108 over 450. And then finally I add the last 2, which is 28 plus 27, 55. So I get 55 over 50. So that's my new row one, and that's then I'm done. So I get one zero zero sixty-three over four fifty one oh eight over four fifty fifty-five over four fifty zero one zero and then the rest of it just copy down. So my final inverse matrix here, B inverse, is, and then I'll see if I can simplify anything here. 63 divided by 9, that doesn't work. Oh, yeah, it does. So I can divide this by 9. So I'll get 7 fiftieths. Uh, 108 divided by 9 is 12. So I'll get 12 fiftieths. 55 50s, but I actually can simplify that down. down. We can also simplify that one. 12 50s would be uh, 6 25ths. Here are 55, uh, what do I have? 55 over 450. So 55 divided by 9, that doesn't work. So 55 divided by 5 is 11. So I get 11 and 4, 50 divided by 5 is 90. So I get 11 90ths. Uh, 18 over 4, 50. I think you can divide by 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2. So I get 2 50ths. Is that right? 18 divided by 4, 50 equals 0 0.04, which is the same as 2 50ths, so which is actually 1 25th. One sixty two divided by nine is eighteen. So I get eighteen over fifty, which is nine over twenty five. So it's nine twenty fifths minus fourteen. If I divide by two, I'll get seven twenty fifths. Here, that's as far as you can go. It's a prime number in the numerator. Divide by two, you'll get negative. 4 25ths, and here you're stuck. That's pretty much it. Okay, so that is what I get. Let me just check my answer, cross my fingers. And... Okay, drum roll. I think we did it right. Miracle of miracles. Uh, almost. I've got one number that didn't work out. So let me just, it's this, this number here, which would be one of my last calculations. It would be this one. Um, oh, it's because I wrote it down wrong. I think. Let me just pause it for a second find out where it went wrong. Okay, I found it. So what I did was when I multiplied row 2 times negative 2, that should be negative right there. And as a consequence, you get 28 50 is negative 28 50 is plus 27 50 is, which is negative 
one fiftieth. So that comes over here, and this number, which was wrong also, is one negative one fiftieth, which you can't really you can't simplify or reduce it, so this becomes negative one fiftieth. So luckily all the other ones are correct. So let's just kind of review what we did. I mean, it was, it was pretty hairy, but so you start with the original matrix. You put this identity matrix as an augmented matrix. The first step is to get a one here in the upper left hand corner, which was fine because that's what the original matrix had. Then you multiply row one by negative four and negative five so that when you add row one and row two, you get this and row one and row three and you get that. So that's the first thing you do, you get zeros here. The next step is to take row two and divide by this coefficient, divide by negative nine, or multiply by negative one ninth to get that. Now once you have that, then you can multiply this row by positive eight. So when you add this row and that row, you get zero there. So then we have one, zero, one, zero, zero. This point, you can then take row three and multiply by the inverse, the reciprocal of this number to get one here, and these fractions get changed appropriately. Then you go back in the opposite direction. So next step is to get a zero here and a zero there. So you multiply row three by the appropriate number, in this case by 14 ninths, so you get positive 14 ninths here, negative 14 ninths. You add those two together, so you get zero, and do the rest of the stuff. And you then multiply this row by positive three, so when you add these two together, this times positive three and this together, you get zero at that point. And then your final step is to get a zero here, and to do that, you multiply row two by negative two, so when I add this row times negative two plus this row, you get a zero right there. Once you get the identity matrix here, then this result is the inverse, and you simplify down the fractions as much as you can. Obviously, you're not gonna do something uh, that complicated on a test because you just would not have enough time. And it's just one mistake. Just imagine trying to find a person's mistake in that mess. Okay, now there is a another way of calculating inverse matrices, two by two matrices. And it says that if you have a matrix A, B, C, D, the inverse matrix is equal to one over A, D minus BC times, and what you do is you uh, move these diagonally, so where D is, A goes, and where A is, D goes. And then you do the same thing this direction, but you change the sign. No, you just change the sign. Don't switch them. So you just change this diagonal to a negative. And then you just plug the numbers into the formula, and you get the answer. So it's, it's easier than having to use the augmented matrix. It only works for two by two matrices, so that's not that great. So let's actually use it on the first problem that we had, which was two, four, negative one, eight. So let's do that. Two, four, negative one, eight. So according to their terminology, A is two, B is four, C is negative one, D is 8 based on their position relative to this. So the inverse matrix is equal to 1 divided by A, which is 2, times D, which is 8, minus B, which is 4, times C, which is negative 1. And you multiply that by the matrix. So we switch these. So instead of 2, 8 across this diagonal, it becomes 8, 2. And here we just change the sign. So this becomes negative four, this becomes positive one. And if we 
to do this, we'll get 16 plus 4 minus that's minus. So that's 1 20th. And then let's just go ahead and multiply by this constant. So you'll get 8 twentieths, which can be simplified down to um, 2 fifths. So 8, 8 twentieths, 2 fifths. Negative 4 twentieths would be negative 1 fifth. We just get 1 twentieth there. And then we get 2 twentieths, which is 1 tenth. So that's the answer. And if you go back to our augmented matrix thing, we got two fifths, negative one fifth. So that was the that was the inverse matrix right there. Actually, where was it? It was, it was right down here. So if I take that, and I keep dragging it across here until I get to the One more. So there it is, and there it is. Okay. So this one's pretty straightforward. And I guess the final thing is. If you want to solve a system of linear equations other than using the augmented matrix thing, so let's say I have this matrix. If I have a, let's just start with a linear equation. So we'll just start with 2x plus 3y equals 7, and negative x plus 4 is e 4y is equal to 12. So if you create a matrix out of that, you'll get 2, 3, negative 1, 4. So that's my coefficient matrix. And I have my unknown matrix x and y, and on the right-hand side I have I have um, yeah I have seven and twelve. If I wanted to solve this, we would call this the A matrix and this the B matrix, and this is the X matrix. So it's A times X equals B. If you found the inverse of A, then you would, if you take the A inverse and you multiply every term, you'll have on the left hand side, you'll have A inverse times A times X. And then on the other side, is you'll have A inverse times B. But A inverse times A is the identity matrix, which we specify in shorthand as just I. And when you multiply the inverse, so what you, if you have the identity matrix times X, that's just X. That's my solution. And over here, when you multiply this together, you'll end up with a matrix, whatever it is. It'll be a two by one matrix. And these will, the numbers that you get when you multiply the inverse times B is you'll get the solution. So let's uh, actually go back to this one, which we've used. So if I had, if I had an equation was 2x plus 4y is equal to 10 and negative x plus 8y is equal to 5. What I would do, well, first I could write this as a matrix equation, matrix form. So you'll have that times x, y is equal to 10, 5. Now the solution, my solution is going to be equal to the inverse matrix, which is this, 2 fifths, negative 1 fifth, 1 20th, 1 tenth, and I multiply by 5, 10. So I take E inverse times B, 
And when I do that, I'll end up with, so I have 2 fifths times 10, which is 20 fifths. 20 fifths is 4. And then I add negative 1 fifth times 10, which is going to be negative 2. And then in the bottom I have 1 20th times 5, which is going to be uh, 5 20th, which is a fourth. Plus I have 1 tenth, so that's that times that. So I've got 5 20th plus 10 tenths, which is 1. So just using matrix multiplication, end up with the 2 by 1 matrix. So I get 2 and 5 fourths. So those, that means my solution is x equals 2, y equals 5 fourths. So let's just see if that really worked or not. So what that means is if I plug these two numbers into the original equations, both of these equations should be satisfied. So I'll take 2 times x plus 4 times y. So that's 4 plus 5, which is not right. OK, so let's see what I did wrong here. Okay, let's go back here. So we did something wrong. And let's see, how do we do this? Um, let's just... Okay, so what I did was I took this and I multiplied by... Where did I have that? I thought I had it... Yeah, that was over... Well... Oh, here it is. This is what I'm doing. I'm taking that times that. So I had 5, 2 times, so that's actually 2, isn't it? 2 fifths times 5 is, no, oh, it's 2. And here I get, I don't know what I did last time. Oh, I got dyslexic. So this is 10 and 5. That's where I messed up. Okay, so let's try this all over again. Fix that, fix that. Okay, now we'll try it. So 2 fifths times 10, this, uh, that is um, 20 fifths, which is 4. Okay, I got that part right. And then we have negative 1 fifth times 5, which is going to be negative 1. So I get 4 minus 1. We're actually, this is not a 4 by 4, four 2 by 2 matrix. It's by one, so I add those together and I get three. And here I have ten twentieths, which is a half, plus five tenths, which is a half. So I get a half plus a half, which is one. Okay, so that means my solution is what x equals three, y equals one. Okay, now we can go back and try it out. So that being the solution. Let's go check it out in the original equation. So we get 2 times 3 plus 4 times 1, x and y, I get 10. So check. And the next one is negative x, which is negative 3, plus 8 times y, which is 1. So 8 minus 3 is 5. Check. OK. So it did work. So the basic idea is if you have a system of linear equations, you write it in matrix form. You find the inverse of the coefficient matrix, however you want to do it. Then you take that inverse and you multiply by the matrix, the two by one matrix or whatever matrix on the right hand side. The resulting product gives you the solution where this is X and this is Y. So that's another way of solving systems of linear equations.